Thank you so much for joining me today on Just Praise Him Radio. I'm your host, Linda Lomax, and my job is to inspire you to a closer walk with Christ. Now here's the show. Hello, believers. Welcome to the Just Praise Him radio show. I'm your host, Glenda Lomax, and I do not have a title for my message tonight because it's not actually a message. We're doing an all-prophetic show. Um, I got the first four words of this show on, I think it was about April 9th, but I didn't get the rest of them until today. This was not the show that I planned for this week or the one I worked on all day, but when the Lord gave me the, the rest of these words, I understood why. He wanted this one done instead, and I think you will too. So let me explain, for anybody who hasn't listened to one of these before, how you know if one of these words is for you. Um, I don't think I have names for any of these. Sometimes I get the names, sometimes I don't. Um, If when you hear me speak the word, if it feels like God is speaking directly to you, then that word is for you. A word can be for a lot of different people. It's not necessarily for just one person. It may be for just one, but a lot of times they're for multiple people. So let's get started. Lord, I pray that you would open the hearts to receive these words, the people of the people that they are for in Jesus' name, and help them to act on the words, Lord, like you want them to in Jesus' name. And thank you, Lord. Okay, there is a woman listening to this podcast that you just feel like you're ready to give up. You almost did not even tune in to listen to this, but you kind of had a feeling. You've been having a really terrible time. You're dealing with fear about all that's coming and all that's been happening in your life and to those around you. The Lord says to you, woman of God, don't give up. Your breakthrough is just around the corner. Don't give up. Don't abort your promise. You know what I promised you. The enemy is fighting you tooth and nail, but you can defeat him if you will take up your weapons and fight back. The Lord is telling you, woman of God, that the devil is trying to get you to abort your promise, to give up believing for what the Lord told you he is going to do. So the question is, who are you going to believe? The lying devil or the Lord of all creation? The enemy has lied to you that all is lost. All is most definitely not lost. Luke one thirty seven. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Okay, there's a man listening to this. You have kind of dark hair. You're fairly tall, but not giant tall. You've been thinking about everything that's going on in the world, and you know the end is fast approaching, and you know you are not ready. You've been vacillating between just giving up trying to be good at all and, well, maybe just taking yourself out so you don't have to face it. The Lord says to you, sir, I love you, my child. Do not lose courage, for did I not say, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world? Mother and father may cast you out, but I will never leave or forsake you. John 6.37 All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Okay, there's a woman listening to this podcast. I think you're about 40-ish as age goes. You may be 40 or not, or you may just look 40. But you've been inquiring of the Lord about whether you are supposed to move. You have a choice of where you live now or one other place. And I don't know if the other place is like a cabin or what, but the Lord says you are to stay where you are. There is some kind of natural disaster type event that's going to happen at the other place. I think the other place is like a cabin. Don't go. Stay put. In the natural, it seems like the other place being more remote would be safer, but it won't be. I have you safe in the palm of my mighty hand, daughter. Stay put. Y'all, everyone I talk to is struggling to deal with what is happening. Everybody I know really just wants to go home at this point. Our world is so full of sin and perversion and wickedness. It is clearly not a world we belong in. And the Lord wants us to be home with him, but he does not want the rest of the souls here on earth to be lost. He needs us to pray them in the same way somebody else prayed us in years ago. 
Okay, there's a woman listening to this podcast. You have blonde hair. It's kind of straight, about shoulder length. You have recently made a plan for your life, a plan to establish something. I cannot see what it is, but it's like a career plan, a life plan, something like that. The Lord has called you to ministry, to be a minister, basically, and you had two choices. One was to be a minister for him with an uncertain income. The other was this very complicated plan. You have told yourself you will take the complicated way and you will minister occasionally. You will still believe in God, just not give him your whole life. You won't let him choose your career for you. You will be master of your life and your destiny. I see you packing to go start on this complicated plan. You have chosen the very complicated plan because you want a strong income. You want wealth and you want that lifestyle that goes with wealth. You fear poverty in a very big way. You saw something when you were young. I think you're about 12 years old. You saw an impoverished person. I think you may have been on a trip to another country when you saw this, and it terrified you. From that moment on, you have chased wealth and security, fearing you would become like that woman if you did not. Woman of God, the Lord says to you, you have chosen what seems to be the better way and what the world sees as the better way, but this way is the path of fear. The enemy has made you afraid, and if you remain on that path, the fear will go with you, and you will never be free of it. If you remain on this path, you will have the income you so desire, but you will feel empty and alone there. You will drink to numb the loneliness and the emptiness this path will bring you. You will have your position but you will hate your life. You will become an alcoholic in one night when you are alone drinking. You will die an alcoholic. All alone. And the fear will still be with you because you are making this decision based on that fear. This fear you have has become your God. You say, I will not choose your career for you, yet you allow the demon of fear to choose it. If you continue on this path of serving fear, I will give you over to it, and no matter how much wealth you accumulate, no matter how much money you make, you will always have that fear. It will be your companion night and day, but I offer you freedom if you choose my way for your life instead. If you choose my way, I will free you from the fear, and I will give you income and a position you could never have gained your own way. If you choose my way, you will be fulfilled and happy, whether you have little or much. You will have friends who do not hide daggers behind their backs, friends who are not jealous and envious of your position, and you will not need to drink away the fear and emptiness you feel. The choice is yours, but if you choose to serve your fear, I will give you over to it, and it becomes your God, not me. Woman of God, the Lord says if you continue packing that suitcase and you leave to start that life, you have made your choice to serve the God of fear. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil, in that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. But if thine heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them. And by the way, fear is a form of worship. I denounce unto you this day that you shall surely perish, and that you shall not prolong your days upon the land, whither thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth. To record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life. And the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land, which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. Woman of God, I see your tears. You have heard the Lord speak to you, and you're still torn which way to go. You know that was him speaking that word. All you got to do is believe that word and go his path. I grew up in poverty, and I got married, and I lived in poverty 
for many years. And I went to work eventually after I divorced my husband in oil and gas, which was a pretty lucrative field, and I had more than enough. And when he called me to ministry, I had to face that same choice. So I want to tell you that I live more comfortably now and at peace every minute of every day, and there is no amount of money or alcohol that can bring the peace I've got. Because only the Prince of Peace can give you this. Can I just tell you that? No amount of money that you can make is going to bring you this peace and this freedom from that, pe- from that fear. You don't want that fear to be your constant companion. You, you think that having that wealth will set you free from that fear. But he says if you, go, if you pursue that path, then he's going to give you to that fear. Because you're making it your God. If you will just let him choose for you. You will be so happy and so at peace and so fulfilled. And he will still give you income and a position on top of that because you chose the right way. Choose life. Okay, there's a woman listening to this that you've got a pretty good life. You have not reached all your goals yet, but you're checking them off in a, you know, timely fashion. You figured, okay, one year to do this, five years to do that, that kind of thing. And you knew when you should reach each goal. So you're checking them off, and you know you can reach them. The Lord says you have sin in your life, and you know you have sin in your life, but you're comfortable with your sin, so you don't really, you know, feel motivated to change anything. You like your sin. That's why you do it. The Lord says to tell you that if you continue on the path you are on, if you continue to choose your sin over him, and I think this is sexual sin he's talking about primarily. You have other sin. But what he's talking about primarily is the sexual sin. He says, if you continue to choose your sin over him, overdoing what you know you are supposed to do, that he is serving notice on you right now, that you will not ever reach those other goals because he will allow the enemy to strike you with a serious disease. And what I'm seeing looks like cancer in that area of your body. Because anytime we sin, y'all, let me stop here for a second. Anytime you sin, whatever part of your body you use to do that sin, you open a door to the enemy with, okay? And he will open, he will allow the enemy to to put that on you in that area of your body, though it will spread to other areas as well. And he said, you will become disabled to work at all. And in the end, this disease will kill you. You are a professing Christian and your sin is known among the people. He says you are shaming his name for your own pleasure, and you keep doing it and doing it and doing it. Choose now which path you will take and then take it. If you choose the right path and then you backslide and get into this sin again, the disease will still come. The death will still come. Choose you this day whom you will serve, the Lord God of all creation or yourself. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Okay, there's a man listening to this. You have a position in your church. I think you are a businessman as well. You appear like a professional man. You have sin in your life. In both areas, the Lord is showing me. You are sinning in the business by embezzling money, and you are also involved in sin in your church. The Lord says to you, sir, unless you deal with these sins now, I shall expose them. I will expose the sin in the church before all the congregation, and I will cause the embezzlement to be discovered as well. The embezzlement will bring with it criminal charges, and you will not work another respectable job once they are are filed, for all will hear of it. You already know what the sin in the church will bring. Deal with these sins now and forsake them completely as of the minute you hear this, or I will. And now... Because you have done all these works, saith the Lord, and I spake unto you, rising up early and speaking, but you heard it not, and I called you, but you answered not. Therefore will I do unto this house, which is called by my name, wherein ye trust, and unto the place which I gave to you to your fathers, 
as I have done to Shiloh. And I will cast you out of my sight as I have cast out all your brethren, even the whole seed of Ephraim. There is a person listening to this that you have set your heart to win souls. You eat, sleep, and breathe soul winning. That's so awesome. You are so zealous to win souls for God's kingdom. The Lord wants you to know, I think you're a woman, but this word may be for more than one person, as these words usually are. He wants you to know that he is so pleased with your work for his kingdom. And he says, what can I do for you, my daughter? He wants to know what you would like for him to grant to you. What is your greatest wish? And he wants you to know you won't just be rewarded in heaven, but here on earth as he is about to grant answers to some things you have been praying for very earnestly. I think you have some lost loved ones you're praying for to come in. And he is smiling as he says, watch this. (laughs) You see their hard hearts now, but just watch what I can do for I am a mighty God. Is my name not Jehovah? Is anything too hard for me? Yes, my daughter, rewards are not only coming, but they are already on their way to you now. Keep doing your work for my kingdom, for you shall be greatly rewarded. I will amaze and delight you. Proverbs 1130, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that wins souls is wise. Okay, there's someone listening to this podcast that you often give prophetic messages to people. You love to give them messages that are what they want to hear. But the Lord says you are not giving them words from me though you claim to be. You have even practiced witchcraft by using his name to give a fake word to get people to do what you want them to do. The Lord says to you, that stops now, this minute. The minute you hear this, you will never ever give another word saying it is from me. If you do, I will strike you mute. And he means any word, fake or otherwise. You will not speak at all ever again. I will not have lies spoken to my people in my name. Deuteronomy 18.20, But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. Okay, there's a young man listening to this. You may be hearing it because someone else is listening to it. One of God's true daughters is in love with you. You like her well enough and you plan to marry her because her family is wealthy and you know that you will have an easy life. But you are living a double life. You are having relations with a man behind your fiance's back. You know it is wrong, but you have the attitude of, I'm going to do what I want to do. Anyone don't like it, too bad for them. You are very spoiled and arrogant, the Lord says. The Lord wants you to know, sir, that you have two choices. One, you can give up the man you're seeing behind his daughter's back and be a good and loving husband to her, and you may continue on your path to marriage and earthly happiness. Or two, you may continue as you are, seeing both people, and he will expose your sin to your future father-in-law, the people you work with, and your family, and you can lose the woman, your job, and most everything else you have by virtue of your association with her family. He says it is totally your choice, but you will make that choice and follow through with it within seven days of when you hear this to the hour, because he is going to keep his word in this if you don't forsake that sin and never do it again. And he means having relations with men, period. Numbers 32, 23, but if you will not do so, behold, you have sinned against the Lord and be sure your sin will find you out. Y'all, we need to be very careful how we treat people that are that belong to the Lord, especially people that are very devoted to him. That is a serious thing in God's eyes. Okay, there is a woman listening to this podcast. You're about middle age, somewhere between 40 and about 58. You're a professional woman, a nice looking woman. You dress nice. You drive a nice car. But you are unhappy that you have not reached a particular goal yet. I don't know if it's, I don't, at first I thought maybe it's having a home of your own or a vacation home or something like that. It really bothers you that you have worked so hard, you're educated, and you also work hard at your job, and you do not have this one thing that you really want. 
Satan is telling you if you get that one thing, you will finally be happy. And you believe him. All that you need to get that is a certain amount of money. And I think it is a like a vacation home or a condo or a timeshare in a certain place, a, a certain resort area. You want to be able to jet off for a weekend to the beach at this place and lay in the sun in a bikini drinking cocktails with little umbrellas in them whenever you have a stressful week. The flights are not expensive, but the cost of a hotel there is astronomical. Hence the condo or timeshare or vacation home or whatever it is that you want to buy. You also know you could make some strong business connections at this vacation destination, and you want that too. Because you work so hard at your job and you still cannot have this one thing you desire, and because you are a woman who is used to getting what you want, you feel like they owe it to you to pay for this. They have plenty of money. They are a very profitable established business, which you help make profitable, obviously, since you work there. So you have been thinking about it, and you know a way to just take that much money and make it look like it was spent on certain expenses. That is called embezzlement, by the way. But you are very smart, and you're pretty, and you're pretty sure you can get away with it. And since you're pretty and you're charming, you can usually charm your way out of almost anything. And you figure you can play dumb if all else fails and they catch you. And you can make them believe it. You actually already have a plan to do this. And you were thinking about when you should do it. There is a date upcoming when you know that some of the owners or partners of the business will be gone to a training or seminar. And you are thinking that is the best time to do it and cover your tracks. They will never be the wiser and you will be a whole lot happier. And you will be jetting off off into your new condo or whatever it is. And you're already looking at bikinis for that and planning your first weekend getaway. You figure you've put in the time and the work and you should, by golly, have what everybody else seems to have. The Lord wants you to know before you put this plan into action that there is a safeguard in place at that business that you are not privy to that prevents that very thing from being successful. He says, if you go through with that plan, because at least one of the owners is a true believer, he will allow you to be caught and you will be prosecuted for embezzlement. It is up to you if you want to believe in your own intelligence over this word from the Lord. There is always a recompense for taking from the Lord's true people. And he also wants you to know if you would just give your life to him and serve him instead of yourself, that he would give you the desires of your heart. Numbers thirty two twenty three. But if you will not do so, behold, you have sinned against the Lord and be sure your sin will find you out. Well, that's all I have for you all this week. Wow, the Lord is definitely calling out sin everywhere we look lately. He's calling it out in my church, too. It is clear he wants the sin out of our homes and out of his churches, and he's not going to wink at it. If you're in sin, now would be a really good time to get out of it for your own good. And I will tell you all something, the way, and I don't have the scriptures pulled up in front of me right now, but the way God deals with sin is the same way he tells us to deal with a person that we have ought against. He tells us, Go to them by, the, you know, just you and him first and tell them, you know, what's wrong and give them a chance to make it right. And if they won't listen to take like another witness or two with you and go to them. And if they still won't listen, then you go and you bring it before the church. God does the same thing. He'll come to you first. And if you won't repent and get out of the sin, then he'll tell somebody else what you're doing and they'll come to you. And if you still won't repent and get out of the sin, then he will call it out in front of the congregation. So just be aware of that. Because that's a whole lot way worse way to have to come out of it, okay? And if you don't come out of it, I mean, you don't have to, then you, you'll deal with the consequences of being in it. He'll give you over to it. Okay, that's all I got for y'all. Thanks for listening. Jesus bless you and keep you. Y'all have a great weekend. Thank you so much for tuning in today to Just Praise Him Radio. You can contact me by mail at my new address, JPH Inc., Glenda Lomax, P.O. Box 60, Glencoe, Arkansas, 72539, or by email at jphtoday at gmail.com. 
JPH is not affiliated with any nonprofit organization, church, or denomination. If you ask anyone you know what the most difficult experience of their life has been, many will answer about a time of betrayal. All those called to walk the narrow path will at some point encounter Judas. How will you respond? Do you know how to recognize Judas when he shows up in your life? Can you keep Judas from bringing destruction to your life and ministry? How can you minimize what Judas cost you? Can you pass the test of absolute betrayal? Get your copy of The Judas Test, available in print and new audiobook, The Judas Test by Glenda Lomax, available now on Amazon.com. Sold out for 30 pieces of silver? In Exodus 21 32, it is the price of a dead slave. In Leviticus 27 2 through 7, it is the price of a live one. Jesus was sold for the price of a bondservant. Precious Jesus, the Son of God, the Prince of Peace, the King of Kings, why did Judas sell his friend out so cheap? Have you ever gone through a time in your life where suddenly it just felt like your whole life was falling apart? I call these experiences the wilderness experiences. Wilderness experiences are a time of great uncertainty and change. Uh, there are times when our faith is tried and refined. After many experiences, the Lord spoke to me to write The Wilderness Companion, which is a virtual roadmap through the desert times of your life. Find out why you've been led to the wilderness. Find out what the biggest hindrance is to receiving provision in the wilderness. Find out what the seven temptations of the wilderness are. Drastically cut the time you spend in the wilderness by learning how to partner with the Lord instead of working against Him. Every Christian needs to read The Wilderness Companion. It's by Glenda Lomax and it's available on Amazon.com or WingsOfProphecy.com. Amazon.com, The Wilderness Companion by Glenda Lomax. Sidewalk Flowers Volume 1 is a collection of 58 short inspirational readings that will uplift, comfort, and encourage readers from every walk of life. Sidewalk Flowers includes inspirational tales and topics taken from the lives of everyday people who exhibited extraordinary wisdom, kindness, and courage while traveling the sidewalks of life. Get your copy of Sidewalk Flowers Volume 1 today, available in print and new audiobook. Sidewalk Flowers Volume 1 by Glenda Lomax, available on Amazon.com in print or new audiobook. There is no one on earth who has not been wronged at some time in their life. Everyone has a story to tell. Everyone has been hurt by someone. The pain you have suffered does not make you special. It is what you do with that pain that sets you apart. Life can make you bitter or it can make you better. You choose. The only difference between the two is the I 